And he is, by the way, condemned to hell in Dante's Inferno. <laughs> he is Satan's papal Roman Caesar. And what were his blasphemous claims? Here is what he says. Quote, I have the authority of the king of kings. I am all in all. So that God himself and I, the vicar of God, have but one consistory, namely one essence. And I am able to do almost all that God can do. Now here's the sentence. What therefore can you make of me but God? I will repeat it. What therefore can you make of me but God? Here is Pope Boniface coming to the logical conclusion that he, if he is the vicar of God, that he can do almost all that God can do. The logical conclusion, as he states, is what therefore can you make of me but God? As I've said previously, there's only one man on earth who is allowed to be divine as recognized by the people, and that is the Pope. That is why World War II got rid of the Japanese emperor, because he was in rivalry with the Pope. He claimed to be divine. That is why the Dalai Lama was removed from power in 1959. He claimed to be divine. There is only one man on earth who is allowed to be divine, and that is the Pope. Continued. Here is another quote of Boniface VIII. Quote, To such an extent that the papal pretensions go that Boniface VIII showed himself to a crowd of pilgrims at the Jubilee of 1300, seated on the throne of Constantine, arrayed with sword and crown and scepter, shouting aloud, I am Caesar, I am Emperor. So he not only claims to be God, he claims to be the Roman Emperor in 1300. Now this is the reality of the Pope. Every Pope considers himself to be Caesar, a Roman Emperor, with the right to rule every nation on the face of the earth. Because, you see, he not only has universal temporal power, but he has universal spiritual power, so he claims. Meaning that every human creature, the conscience of every human creature, is to be subject to this man called the Pope. And this quote that I read is out of the Jesuits in History by Hector McPherson, written in 1914, page 109. Here's Pope Pius IX, the murderer of Abraham Lincoln, the murderer of the great president of Mexico, Benito Juarez. What did Pope Pius IX say, who reigned from 1846 to 1878? What were his blasphemous claims? Here he, here he says, quote, I am sovereign. I claim to be the supreme judge on earth and the director of the consciences of men, of the peasant that tills the field and the prince that sits on the throne. That's right, John F. Kennedy. If you don't do what I tell you to do, nigga, I'm going to kill you with my CIA. If the household that lives in the shade of pri of the household that lives in privacy in the shade of privacy, and the legislative that makes laws for kingdoms. That's right. Uh, Chucky Schumer, you Masonic Jew, you don't do what I tell you to do, Jew boy, and I'm going to get rid of you out of New York. That's how it relates today, my listeners. I am the sole, last, supreme judge of what is right and wrong. So here is the Pope who's going to tell us what is right and wrong. Is that not a, an attribute of God? It is, is it not God who tells us what is right and wrong in His Word, the Bible? He's exercising an attribute of God, telling us what is right and what is wrong. Now let's go to Pope Leo XIII, the assassin of William McKinley, who was the biological father of Cardinal Satoli. That's right, he had probably many children. When they call the Pope's Holy Father, they're not holy, but they most assuredly are fathers. What were his blasphemous claims? Now here are the words of Pope Leo the Thirteenth in eighteen ninety four. From an encyclical letter, june twentieth, eighteen ninety four, Proclara Congratulationis Publica. Here is what he says quote, We, the Popes, hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Well, if he's holding the place of God Almighty, what's to preclude him from claiming to be God Almighty and acting like God Almighty? 
If he's in the place of God Almighty, he is in fact God Almighty in his mind and in, in the acts that he does because he exercises the right to kill wolves, according to the Jesuits. He has the right to feed the sheep and kill the wolves. He has the right, the power of death. He has the right to commit assassination using his international intelligence community, which includes the CIA and the Russian FSB and the German BND and the Israeli Mossad and the Pakistani ISI and the English MI5, MI6, etc., etc., etc. All tied together at the top at the Vatican. Well, let's go and see what now... Uh, uh, Another pope had to say. Let's see what Pius XI had to say. Of 1922 to 1939, by the way, Pius XI was an ex-Jesuit, and he was and he conveniently died just prior to the beginning of World War II. He, what were his blasphemous claims? Here's what he says, and this is Pope Pius IX in 1924 speaking to ch school children at the Vatican. And it's in a book that I have titled Alien Rome. Quote, I am the Pope. I am king over all. I am God on earth. I shall repeat. I am God on earth. When I speak, my word is the word of God. Not the Bible, but His word. And by the way, this is after Him declared to be infallible in 1870. And so that when he speaks ex cathedra, they're the words of God. When I speak, my word is the word of God, and you are to remember this as long as you live, unquote. Pope Pius XI, 1924. That wasn't too long ago. So, my white brothers, the Pope is not only the vicar of the Christ created by Constantine, not the Christ of the Bible, but he also claims to be claims to speak the words of God, and there are only, there's only one man who can do that, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of God, as the Spirit of God was moving men to write the Bible. And if he speaks anything apart from the Bible, he's not speaking the words of God. And therefore, he claims to be God on earth, and he has the right to kill whoever he wishes, whoever's to make alive. I have another quote here where he orders certain of his servants to kill certain Certain people. I have back here when, uh, uh, in 880, 860, he orders his people to go in and kill a certain nation. He says here, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it's my PowerPoint. I didn't have it to read right now. But uh, he has these powers. And so now, is it any wonder why the Pope is, cr is conducting a crusade against the Shia using the American military because he has the right to kill infidels? Does he, is it any wonder why the Pope in charge of the high Muslim leaders are killing the black Christians of Nigeria and Darfur? and other areas in black Africa that were historically Protestant? Is it any wonder why he could use Idi Amin, that Wahhabi Islamic, that Wahhabi Muslim, and kill 250,000 black Anglican Christians and send 50,000 Asians into England to further destroy the white English race? Pursuant to the Council of Trent and the destruction of the Protestant Reformation, the Turk, my, the Pope, my friend, claims to be not only in the place of God, but to speak the words of God, and to be in fact God. And these are his words quoted in my PowerPoint. You need to get a copy. Now let's, as we review the history of Protestant nations, see what the white Protestant nations have done in the past. You see, because the Pope claims to have these powers, spiritual and temporal power, he claims to have the two keys, the one key being his spiritual power, the other key being his temporal power, the Protestants of Holland refused to accept it. And therefore the Pope used his temporal power in controlling Philip II of Spain to attack the Dutch Protestants. And therefore the Dutch Protestants and their great leader, William of Orange I, seceded. They broke political ties with the Spanish dictator and his 
in his uh, crusader, the Duke of Alva, 